Sweetheart, come on. Come on, sweetheart. You want your apple? You want your apple? This is Jerry. We're in the garden room today. What a perfect place to be for all the greens that I've gathered in order to make a few um, wonderful arrangements for the house, for the winter season, for the Christmas season, to bring that beautiful life from the garden into your home during that somewhat bleak time of year. We're going to bring in some cheer. So we've got all kinds of greenery here simplicity of this holly in the window and this is just the holly that I picked off my holly bushes outside I specifically grew those 10 years ago for winter time so that they would make beautiful indoor decorations for the long winter and in the window along with the holly I put my needle felted birds but only the ones that are red and orange. Collected from the garden just a few minutes ago, some of the most wonderful scents you can possibly have in your house in winter. Rosemary. Rosemary, pine, and cedar are my favorite winter scents in the house. But we've also got lamb's ear, which has no scent but makes a nice wreath. And we've got some lavender over here. So I'm going to incorporate these into some greenery make a simple rosemary wreath. I'm just using a grapevine wreath. This is a wreath. I just, I'll just i use it over and over again every year for something different. Last year I think it was a holly wreath. And I'm just sliding the bits of rosemary in between the twigs and the wires and it's going to be pretty secure. It's just about as simple as it could possibly be. And if you had a nice crop of rosemary this year, it's so great to put it to use. If you didn't, go buy yourself a little rosemary plant this winter. Bring it in your house over the winter. Plant it in the garden in the spring. It's, uh, they're selling rosemary at this time of year in little pots. In fact, they often sell them in the form of a little Christmas tree. So you can bring that in your house and get that wonderful scent of rosemary during the winter. And then go ahead and plant it into your garden in the spring. 
and hopefully it'll just thrive and the next winter you'll have enough rosemary that you can make a beautiful rosemary wreath. I'm not going to do much to this, but I wouldn't mind a little more color. Now the colonials may have taken a piece of fruit, such as an apple, an orange, a pear, even a lemon or a lime, and decorated their trees or their wreaths or their swags with fruit. I just happen to have some very small tangerines which aren't too good for eating anymore. And I'm going to add those to this wreath. And I'm going to call it done. Because I really, I just like to keep things simple. Unless I'm doing a Victorian tree and that's going to be a whole nother matter. These more of winter wreaths and winter decor rather than Christmas decor, because I leave it up in January and February. It's not simply a Christmas thing. It's a, a seasonal, beautiful way of bringing the outdoors into the house over the bleak winter months. Let's add just a little more by putting a little swag of lamb's ear leaves up here on the top. And we'll just tie that in with some embroidery thread. These clementines got a little past their prime, so I'm going to take the ones that don't look quite so bad, and I'm going to use these on this wreath by sliding a piece of wire right through it to the center, and I'm going to attach it like so. I'll use three. Yeah, three or two? Three. Could use an apple here. That'd be nice. Actually, three might be a little. little. No, nope, three is good. Okay. There, I think all this needs is a little touch of red, a little touch of holly up here, and that should complete this very simple wreath. For holly, so I added a few little holly berries here at the top, and I think that really finished it off pretty nicely. Now in my research on Christmas trees and greenery, I learned about something called medieval miracle plays, where they would go through the town the actors and actress, they would be putting on religious plays for the townspeople, for the village people. They would also be taking a big tree along with them. And the tree was laden with all kinds of fruit and breads. And when they left the town, they would leave the tree in the center of the town for the poor to come and eat off the tree. So that's one legend of the Christmas tree. And there are many very small grapevine wreath and we still have some of these lamb's ear left over and lamb's ear dries really nicely too so it'll just dry on the wreath makes a really great bit of dried foliage so this will be good for months and months and I'm just tying it on with a string as I move along the wreath reason why your Christmas or winter decor has to just be red and green. Here we've got a beautiful little grapevine wreath covered in lamb's ear and our dried flowers from the summer which were pink gomprina and some dried thistle. And I think, I think that's a beautiful little wreath. One thing I often find in our abandoned nests at this time of year because the trees are bare and they're just sitting there in the limbs or they're blown onto the ground and they make wonderful decor as well um, for your winter mantles or your windowsills or just to set in a bowl. Of course, these are clay eggs. They're not real. But I'm not sure what to do with these yet and I'm sure I'll think of something. Now one of the things I want to do is take the dried flowers that we collected over the summer and then we dried them from the garden and I want to 
just festoon this twig tree with them. This isn't exactly the kind of tree I wanted. I didn't want glitter all over the tree. This is the only one I could find, and it's a little bit, little bit small as well. But there is a remedy for that as well. And this will just be covered with dried flowers. So form one, using chicken wire, as you would in making a topiary. And this is simply some old chicken wire from up in the barn, fashioned into a cone. And I think I'm going to cover this one with the ivy that I pulled out of the garden, because that we have in absolute abundance. So you can just use the things that you find around a garden. I mean, we bring flowers into the house all summer long and all spring long. So why not do the same thing in the winter to cheer up your surroundings? You can bring the garden inside by using your evergreens, your berries, your rose hips, and your dried flowers. So here I have wrapped the topiary chicken wire tree with ivy from outside. And it's beautiful simply the way it is. But if you want to add a little more to it, I am going to be putting some sprigs of dried flowers in there, here and there, that I collected over the summer and dried. Probably some dried beauty berries, maybe some straw flowers, um, sedum, just to give it a little more oomph. Although I think it's beautiful just the way it is. I really do like things natural and simple. Drumstick Allium. Well, I think that is a beautiful tree. And it didn't cost a penny. Things don't have to be complicated either. There's no reason to stress out <laughs> during this time. That's just a waste of time. So if you just want to make it simple, bring in some greens from outside. I mean, I never get tired of this wonderful holly, but there are other things that you can bring in. You can bring in the ivy and cedar and pine, and maybe you've got some um, dried roses still out in the garden, and just put them in a vase. Simple as that. I mean, holly in a vase is just very beautiful. The whole point is to keep things simple and inexpensive and yet still beautiful. And what could be more beautiful than what nature has to offer even at this time of year? So here we have once again I'm using the little privet berries and holly and the rosemary, and basically using the same things over and over again because that's what we have, and yet making different, creating a different look for each piece. You know, this is the first year that my holly bushes have actually produced red berries. They never had them before. After 10 years, that's very odd. So here we can make a little swag. So I fastened both of these end pieces onto some sticks to give them a little more security and wired it together and now put something here in the center. You mentioned that you might find some dried roses in your garden and I just happened to find some in mine. They were semi-frozen yesterday when I went out and I just happened to see them. Didn't have very many but these would, these would be really lovely here in the middle this little swag and as the flowers dry more and more they just get prettier and more antique looking 
just a very pretty little swag here. You see, it's just so easy. Just use your imagination and what you have around you. Just by using maybe four or five different foliage elements that you might have growing right in your yard or in a nearby field, you can make several different looks, create several different creative looks, each one of them very beautiful but unique in its own way, and it's free. And there you have a very simple little swag. With roses, privet, holly, rosemary, and moss. So the last thing I'll be making in this video will be a door plaque, and I'll need a wire clothes hanger and a piece of chicken wire. I'm going to pull open my clothes hanger and I'm going to line it with the chicken wire. And upon this chicken wire I'll mount the evergreens that I have and it just could take this about 10 minutes. It's just so simple. You a form on which to lay your evergreens and that's all we're going to do. We're going to lay the evergreens upon this. We're going to attach it with floral wire and then hang it in a window or a door um, inside or out. So here I've secured the greenery to the chicken wire form and the hanger with just a few pieces of wire and once again we just have a really simple plaque. I believe this is this is sort of colonial. They often used a lot of fruit in the greens that they brought in for the winter and Christmas. So we have beauty berries, privet berries, cedar, more holly, and fruit. It's just so simple. It's very beautiful. It's very simple. I think I'll hang it on the front door. So with the addition of a few peacock feathers, this door plaque turned out pretty nicely. I think one more addition might be the a ribbon just right up here to hide that hook. So I think I'll look for some plaid ribbon, perhaps, or just a piece of plaid cloth. Well, as you can see, I've still got a lot, a lot left here, and I haven't even touched this twig tree yet. But I want to keep these videos short um, because I want to do several before Christmas. And we didn't even have tea today, but we will next time. We'll also be baking something. But I want to do a few maybe 15, 20 minute videos over the Christmas holiday. Next time we'll talk about a little more about Christmas and the meaning of Christmas to me, maybe the meaning of Christmas to you. And uh, we'll do some baking. I think we'll do a pioneer Christmas tree and we'll even do a Victorian Christmas tree. So from Hopalong Hollow, we'll see you next time with a cup of tea and maybe a mug of chocolate. Bye. I really love this tree.